Do you see the size of this thing? This is a thousand watt hours. Obviously, I am speechless at the size of this 1000 watt hour power station. It's a little bit less. I'll talk about that in a second. But this is the Fox Dion i go 1200 super interesting device i'm glad they reached out to me to send it out let's talk about it a little bit this thing has 900 and about 90 let's say 984 984 watt hours of battery capacity in this form factor i'm like legit blown away at the size of this thing i really am it's lithium iron phosphate it has a 1200 watt ac inverter it also has a usb-c 100 watt nine bi-directional joint which is eh, unfortunate it can take in up to 240 watts of solar which is a good look it has three quick charge usb a ports it comes with a power brick and adapter it's not fancy all in one but that's okay it charges at about 210 or so watts here you can see what the thing is rated at the power adapter what is going on with my light here it's a very simple like no frills device which is okay with me because the key thing about this is the size you have a thousand watt hours in such a small form factor i'm i'm literally blown away at how much power they were able to cram into this small form factor i mean it look at it compared to a 500 watt hour capacity <laughs> power station i mean this is this is ridiculous I, okay i'm let me let's move on let's talk about the interface a little bit it has two ac adapters uh non-grounded they have the fake grounding hole it's rated at like i said 1200 watts it has 2400 watts of surge i don't know if i believe that but that's what they say that's what i'm telling y'all <laughs> to kind of piggyback on that simplicity it only has a two button three button approach ac dc in the flashlight it does have this nice folding handle where you can fold it down no wireless charging on the top it uh has a barrel connector and a non i can't remember the size of the barrel connector i'll put it right here if they sent it to me in an email and it also takes anderson i'm slowly really coming aboard of the anderson kind of parade and championing that connector because it's really nice because it's so flexible i talked about it in a different video i'll link it up up here it was a video about a battery but i talked about anderson and how flexible it was and how it helped me to accomplish that maybe i'll link it with a timestamp. i don't know if that works whatever it comes with the power adapter but it does not come with a solar adapter it was like come on man what are we doing the good thing is it's anderson but still they get a ding for that it also does not come with a 12 volt charger here's why that's problematic for me i emailed the company about it it just i i forgot what their response was but the barrel connector is a non-standard barrel connector the anderson joint you cannot use it for 12 volt charging and here's what i mean when you try to charge it with 12 volts it tries to pull all that power that it can take in terms of amps which is problematic so the device that you're plugging it into just ultimately shuts down because it can't provide the 200 and some odd watts that it wants to pull in so the fact that you didn't include the 12 volt barrel connector means you can't charge this thing by 12 volt unless you figure out what type of what type of connector that it has in it hopefully they sent me the joint and i'm able to put it right here but if not then it's kind of like tough luck right now i don't 12 volt charge um that was a disappointment for me it's also a disappointment in the fact that the usb c 100 watt pd port is non-bi-directional so you know it's only solar here solar and ac which is fine the thousand watt hours of capacity i'm rounding up is well served by that ac adapter you can pump about 200 watts maybe a little bit more 210 so into the device which means you can charge it up in about five hours i don't have that large of a load that i would need more than about 200 250 watts to go into the capacity battery would it have been nice if it had like a quick charge interface like an ecoflow or ev3a or something like that sure but i barely use that stuff anyway but that's about me this isn't about me this is about you that super simple interface does have some caveats there's no 5521 on here it's like god dang it that would have been nice in terms of taking power from this and putting it into another device there's also some ac outlets on here as i said that are facing sideways which is good for wall warts because you don't have to worry about them pointing down man that that sun hitting my arm is really uh 
<laughs> it's really pronounced. So the sideways facing outlets is cool. I forgot to mention that it does have a USB-C. It has two USB-Cs. One's a 100 and one's an 18 watt. That's really it for the interface on it. You know, it has your cigarette lighter in between the two outlets, which is an interesting placement, but I'm not complaining. It is what it is. It's just like a different approach to um, this thing. Now I did mention it was LiPo, but one thing that I do need to highlight is that the company's documentation says that it'll do 1500 cycles to 80%, not the typical 3000, 3500. I don't understand that well enough, but they say you could get 1500 cycles. That's what you can get. And that's still good. I mean, 1500 cycles is a lot. If you look at it, I talked about this before. If uh, 3,000 cycles is about 10 years, then you get about five years. So let's just keep it simple. Five years is a long time. 10 years is almost too long, but who's complaining about longevity, right? None of us. Now the screen, as you see here, it's a little basic and it also has a quirk about it. Uh, there's also a big quirk I need to mention to you guys at the end of the video, but it's very important. I'm sorry to push it to the end of the video, but I need to get through these details just in case it's just my unit, but the, the screen is like really basic. It also has a bit of a quirk where it doesn't show like input and output at the same time. One wins over the other. I'm sorry that I don't know exactly which one wins, but I think the input wins over the output. So here's the problem. When the joint gets full, the AC turns off. <laughs> Okay, so the charging speed is slowing down. Oh, it just gave an error. Look at that. The AC errored out. That's one thing they asked me, but um, I wasn't sure. And you can see that this is off now. This still has the blue light on it because it has some power stored in the capacitors. But you can see DC is still on, light is off, right? And it's even at 99%. So let's turn the AC back on. Light is back on. It blinks for some reason. I'm gonna take this out because this is weird because it has capacitor power in it. But it's back at 100%. So let me unplug it and then plug it back in and see what happens. It went down to 99. So let's see, let's just watch. And look at that, went off again. Error message. <sighs> I'm so disappointed in that, just personally, because what I want to use a device for is to run my internet or my TV. And that's what my intentions were in some capacity or another. But with it being a thousand watt hours and me having a 200 watt panel, the risk of it getting full for me is pretty much every day if I don't like hammer on it. So what I had resolved to do is kind of like run a heavier load on them, but you shouldn't have to do that. Now I did talk to them, I talked to them multiple times. They say they're gonna resolve it in post sales. I don't know what that means. Um, I never got a whole lot of clarity about that. If I had to assume, <laughs> one would, I don't wanna assume. They just were like, I'm like, this is a pretty big issue that this thing turns off. Their justification, their explanation is in order to protect the battery, once it gets above about 25 volts or something like that, it's a safety precaution to turn it off. It should not have to do that. But that that size though, I mean, it's pretty cool. All right, back to the back to the video. There are some caveats, a few things that I mentioned, but this thing does get a lot of the basic stuff, right? It has pass through charging. It charges at a good click from solar, 240. I don't know how you get that. It's rated at about 30 volts to seven amps on a solar charging port. It's an eight amp limit like somebody else we know, but I think that that's still cool. So you'll probably get about 150. 160 maybe you know somewhere around there in terms of the realistic output from a panel because panels are not going to be high up at that 30 volt range there are some panels that get about 28 volts and stuff like that i feel like vaguely i remember some stuff from some other youtubers were having like high voltage panels but you can't go above 30 volts wink wink at those who follow the channel right <laughs> anyways inside joke
for the viewers. But even with those things considered, this is a very compelling offering in terms of compact size for people who want about a thousand watt hours, can deal with something really simple, but need the space and the flatness and the compactness of this particular device. I think of people who are in vans, I think of people who are in like tiny homes or small apartments or whatever, where space is kind of like a premium. You compare that to some other power stations that are a thousand watt hours that have some more advanced features, then the thing gets kind of big. <laughs> it gets kind of heavy. Now this does have some heft to it. I'll drop the weight right here, but this size just, it simply cannot be beat to have a thousand watt hours in this kind of form factor it's freaking bananas i don't know how they did it but i'd like more of it Ooh.